So the word Asia is a strange word. The word Asia is a construct. Have you noticed, uh, did you get confused uh, in elementary school of why Native Americans are called Indians? Why are Native Americans called Indians? Are they from India? Why are Indians called Indians and, and Native Americans called Indians? Yeah? That's why because the Columbus was thought it was India, but isn't that right? Yeah. Now at what point did we realize that the Native that that North America was not India? It must have occurred to us. We know it now, right? So at what point in history did we realize that we were not in India? It was probably pretty early on. Probably one of the sailors on one of his ships said, hey, what are you talking about? I've been to India. This is not India. This is something else. I mean, they probably shot him and said, this is India, right? <laughs> but did they do that to every single person throughout history until the present moment? Do we have to be frightened if we call this, this is in India? No, this is the United States of America, and this is a continent that is not the same continent as India. So why do we still, why, why the persistence of this word? I don't know. Why are the Indies, why are the East Indies and the West Indies, why are they called the Indies? Why, these are very strange labels. What does the Caribbean Sea have to do with the Southeast Asian archipelago? They're both called the Indies, the East Indies and the West Indies. Uh, currently, or at least the first version of what Asia was, it started with Istanbul, then called Constantinople. So Turkey was Asia. Uh, the entire continent of Asia Minor, which this map doesn't even show Turkey. Right? Where's Turkey? Not on the map. So Asia, like Indies, like Indians, is a very strange construct. Basically, it boils down to this. Not European. Anything not European and not African. Asia. Okay, it's one of those very bizarre things. Like if you grew up in Thailand, especially, uh, or the Philippines, and uh, in that context, here we are in the Philippines, and um, a Japanese person comes, uh, are you, are, there's not a strong sense that you belong to a single identity, Japanese and Filipinos. It's not a strong sense that that's the same identity. Uh, it would be bizarre. It would be completely inappropriate to refer to those two groups as a, as a single identity. And uh, in Indonesia, uh, when you refer to white people, you say Londo, which is related to the word Blanda, which means the Netherlands, which means Dutch. So Londo is, is like honky, white guy from the Netherlands. So Londo Londo, you know, which is what you get walking down the street, Londo Londo uh, uh, means you're the white guy from the Netherlands, even if you're not from the Netherlands. Um, what happens to a Japanese tourist when they walk down the street? Here. No, in Jakarta. Londo Londo. The Japanese person is lumped into the category with the rest of us as being Dutch. Interesting, isn't it? So it's a similar bizarre construct of, uh, of identity. So this should help. This is a map of population density. Uh, and you might think of Asia. Formally, Asia is that, and I'm going to draw it small, Asia starts in part of Europe and takes on, so if this is the Soviet Union, the Caucasus Mountains, here's the dividing line between, um, between uh, European 
Soviet Union, Russia, and Asian Russia. That's Asia. And Vladivostok at the tip of that peninsula. And then down into China, and then Southeast Asia, and um, in Sumatra, and Java, and the Celebs, the, the, the Moluccas, uh, New Guinea, and some would say, Australians would say, Australia is part of Asia. Um, so all these islands, including Bali. Um, now let's keep going, Burma, Bangladesh, um, India, all of South Asia, uh, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, um, Philippines, Japan, Korean Peninsula, technically Sri Lanka, technically Asia. But the question is, if this is a construct, in what context is this construct useful? And in which context, which context is this construct a distraction at best, or perhaps even harmful? And so uh, that is something that we will be encountering, but in passing. Because for most of the rest of the semester, the word Asia is not going to come up so much. Because once you're inside, <clears throat> once you're talking about Asia, it kind of disappears. And you're no longer interested in Asia. You're interested in the multiple uh, the multiple phenomena that occur within Asia. And so we might talk about China, or Japan, or Korea, North Korea, South Korea. Um, we're not going to talk so much about Asian Russia, because who knows how to deal with that. <laughs> um, you know, the Middle East is something that is distinct in its own group of phenomena, the Arab world. Uh, Israel, is that Asia? It's not very useful to talk about Palestine and Israel uh, as Asia. It's, you know, you can say Asia, including Israel, but right away you're talking about Israel, something much more specific. And so even within China, what do you notice about within China and within India? India quickly becomes not a useful construct. You talk about Calcutta and the the high den and Mumbai or Bombay, depending on whether you want to reinforce the, uh, the former British or the current uh, nation nation state identity. So very quickly, this map is to help us get over Asia and quickly get over the nation state. It's really about cities. Ah, and once you get to cities where the population densities are high, and where cultural phenomena and human engagements with architecture start to happen. Now we're talking. The cases we are going to look at are located not in Asia, not in China, but in Shanghai, and maybe even parts of Shanghai. We will be locating the things we're talking about in cities. By the way, that's Java. The red means it's very high population density. So even when we talk about Indonesia, which is where all of my experience, most of my experience is, um, we'll be talking a lot about different cities in Java, the most populated island of this nation state, which is called Indonesia, which is not a very useful construct, given the fact that there are over 400 distinct language and ethnic identities in, this, in the country of Indonesia. It's not even all shown on this map. Um, it's not a very useful construct. We're more likely to talk about Sunda or Java. Hong Kong is the most densely populated place on the planet, uh, which makes it very interesting to architects. And so you may wish to focus in and zoom in on, on Hong Kong as a very specific phenomenon. It was a British uh, colony up until 
uh, about the time you turned eight, right? 1991. Uh, Kenneth Frampton's uh, work on tectonics and especially uh, critical regionalism will have a very significant impact on some of our discussions. Uh, things like this, the Gibao Cultural Center by Renzo Piano um, that was built in New Caledonia, which remains a part of France, also a part of Asia. Um, the life of the streets is something we'll be looking at, specifically how human bodies occupy space uh, in the context of increasing automobilization, um, the multiple modes of transportation that prevails throughout Asia, uh, the bizarre uh, real estate uh, deployment of your history of architecture as a way of projecting an image of success. So this thing about this this thing about people riding the bus versus people driving cars. It extends to the architectural costumes of real estate um, to create bizarre uh, phenomena of this. This is the gate to a real estate development. Um, transportation has always been a matter of status. Uh, there were laws that dictated who could take what type of transportation. It also dictated who could wear what kind of clothing how many buckles could be on their shoes, how many horses could be on their carriage. And we see that today uh, in many places uh, in uh, where we're going to look at. You buy a car, part of the purchase price of a vehicle is the right to have the right of way over other vehicles. When two cars arrive at an intersection, there is a quick assessment by the drivers Whose car cost more? Whoever's car cost the most is has the right of way. And so these types of mechanisms are still in operation. Um, the planning paradigms of the West have uh, for a very long time been influential in attempts to guide the outward expansion of cities. And so we'll look a bit at the dialogue around those, uh, which tells you a lot about places. Um, here you see an interstate highway map of North America. No wait. It's China. But basically, it's the exact same thing that occurred in the United States in the 1950s with the passage of the Interstate Highway Act. Uh, the natural, there's that word, progression of development in this part of the world is to follow the model set in North America. And so the interstate highway system of uh, across Asia is the natural next step uh, to the development of the region. Uh, ring roads, a uh, very interesting dynamic of Japanese foreign aid helping city after city throughout the world, not just in Asia, uh, develop ring roads so that Japan can sell more cars. A very interesting phenomenon. Bangkok was the testing ground for this. It was so incredibly successful, giving us the worst traffic jams in human history up to that point, because they've recently been surpassed by other places. Um, thus necessitating further Japanese aid to help uh, the Thais build the SkyTrain and bus rapid transit and a new airport, yet again another airport. Um, and so all of these things are brilliant strategies for keeping the international development machinery uh, rolling and keeping Japanese industry, especially the automobile industry, going strong. Because in Japan, Cars are not a very big deal. Not, not many people drive, because who would be crazy enough to drive in Japan? Um, it's a very high density place. It's an island. Uh, and so fast trains uh, become the norm in 
the Tokyo area. Um, and there's some more Japanese transportation. And here we have uh, Bangkok uh, with its urban freeway system uh, crisscrossing the city. Uh, and this is a rare moment when traffic is actually flowing in Bangkok. Uh, back to real estate development. This is a, a, a photocopy of a French uh, mansion and um, the proud uh, developer of it. Uh, behind the facade are multiple units. Um, this is an example of the kind of graphic analysis we will be doing. Um, and I could show you other examples. Let me see. Let me get back to that. The life of the small streets is where a lot of urban life occurs. Uh, people's living space might be quite small. <clears throat> That's okay. This street is the living room of the families that live on it. Uh, cars come down it sometimes, more often than not motorbikes, bicycles, bicycle taxis, people selling things. Uh, this street is a multifunction system. Uh, something that works for many different types of uses, including social uses. Um, here is a busier street, and uh, the high-speed traffic is something that has to be negotiated uh, by all the other users. Um, the symbolic, the deployment of icons uh, in cities is something that we will see 